Welcome back to Afternoon Express. I trust that you are having a wonderful afternoon so far. So Green Home is South Africa's first fully biodegradable packaging company founded in 2007 by Catherine Morris in an effort to combat the plastic pollution crisis in South Africa. Marketing Director Guy Cronier joins us now in the studio to discuss how we can make a change by reducing our carbon footprint. Plus, he will be sharing a few tips on how we can make our lives more eco-conscious. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for having me. So what exactly is Green Home? Cool. So like you said, uh, Green Home is South Africa's first 100% biodegradable food packaging company. Yeah. So we supply um, corporate canteens, restaurants, hotels, uh, events, catering companies with 100% biodegradable um, food packaging products made from plant-based raw materials um, that are fully compostable at the end of life. So if they're in a composting uh, environment, they'll break down into healthy compost. Now that there's so much media on all of the plastic pollution and how bad it is, I think we are now because slowly becoming more and more conscious of it. Like every morning I've got this place who delivers me breakfast and I get a ginger shot and then they put a little... But every morning it's a different little plastic container which I'm only ever going to use once. Mm. Now the lifetime... I'm the only person who's ever going to use that plastic container and then hoping that it doesn't one day end up killing a dolphin in the ocean. <laughs> so, I mean, single-use plastic is obviously the most damaging thing in the world at the moment, no? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, it's, it's, it's positive to see the, the, the dialogue around it and the exposure that it's getting. It's, it's great to see that it's obviously something that's in the forefront of, of everyone's mind. Um, but yeah, single-use plastic is a major, major concern that yeah. we're facing globally at the moment. Um, and it's saying that we need to combat together and, and all of us, you know, pushing towards eradicating it as much as possible. How realistic is it to say that we can live in a plastic-free environment? Yeah, I don't think that we could uh, necessarily go completely plastic-free. Um, plastic has got a lot of utility um, and it's used in a number of different things. I mean, it'd be hard to imagine vehicles, for example, with, without plastic of some degree. I think the main thing that we need to try to eradicate is single-use plastic, and that's the distinction we have to kind of make. Um, and that's what we're aiming for, yeah. So tell us exactly, in your opinion, what a carbon footprint is and how people should try and reduce theirs. Cool. So, I mean, the carbon footprint, obviously, that's not necessarily our kind of expertise. From our perspective, the products that we uh, supply um, are plant-based products. So they're made from plant-based raw materials. Um, and the manufacture of those products are have a considerably less um, carbon footprint than plastic products. So the use of, of products that are plant-based would generally bring down your, your carbon footprint quite substantially, yeah. That's absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. So what do you recommend? I mean, what, what about recycling? Does, like, is it enough to recycle plastic? Um, unfortunately not. So, I mean, don't get us wrong, by no stretch of the imagination are we saying that we shouldn't recycle. Um, it's a fundamental um, part of, of any waste management system. Um, but it's not the silver bullet uh, that everyone kind of thinks it is when it comes to the single-use plastic crisis that we're fa uh, facing. Um, a lot of plastics are not recyclable. You can't recycle them. Um, the plastics that are recyclable uh, decrease in value as they generally decrease in value as they get recycled. So eventually they're going to end up uh, in, a, on a, on a, in landfill or in our, our oceans or whatever at some point in time. So basically we're just delaying the process. Um, there's also a psychological aspect to it as well. Um, a lot of the time consumers think that they, that they, you know, they don't have the regret of using single-use plastic because they think, oh, I'm just going to recycle yeah. it, you know, um, and then it's kind of taken care of. And that's not really the reality. So there's a saying that goes around that we can't recycle our way out of this mess. Uh, we have to find yeah. alternative solutions. Just to give, or just to paint a picture, I think, for our viewers in terms of explaining why single-use plastic is so dangerous, can you give us, like, a lifetime drawing of what happens to plastic? So the, the bottles, the straws mm. and whatever. So from the minute we use it to where it ends up. Yeah, I think um, to, to talk about the lifeline or the life cycle of plastic is yeah. we start from the beginning, the history of it. it Plastic kind of started getting mass produced about 70 years ago yeah. um, and we've seen a very sharp increase in um, the demand for plastic. It's really entered our lives into in a number of different ways. We've become very dependent yeah. on it. Um, but I think the study shows about 50% of, of all plastic ever produced was produced in the last 19 years. Wow. So it's a 70-year history and you know, so much of it is produced really recently. So we're becoming so dependent on it. Um, and it's a major issue because the product is not biodegradable. So it's 
it's produced, it serves its purpose and then it's discarded and doesn't enter into the natural cycles of things yeah. that the earth has developed over, you know, millennia. And it's, it's very lightweight as also it finds its, ways, its way into environments where it shouldn't be and it creates, you know, havoc in those environments as well. So as a material for when it's being used, it's really great you know, to protect yeah, but food, sometimes whatever. Not, but it's actually ridiculous. Like I saw this, there's a store in the UK that was literally peeling the bananas, peeling oranges, peeling nachis and mm. putting them into a plastic container. Exactly. Like nature literally just gave you packaging. Exactly, Why on yeah. earth are you using this plastic yeah. now? Plant-based <laughs> packaging, that's exactly it. You yeah. know, it's, uh, nature has provided so much and we're stepping away from that and stepping out of the natural cycles. We need to yeah. kind of go back towards that. Yeah. Definitely. So give us some tips for people at home to utilize green home to make their ho homes a little bit more eco-conscious. Um, well, I mean, our, our product specifically will, will, will um, be best served towards a, like a more business environment. So yeah. um, in your personal capacity... You mean like in takeaways? Like take if I go and buy a burger exactly, and yeah. chips, then it Which will. is a major component. So a lot of our clients use our products as part of a bigger sustainability initiative. And we're getting yeah. some really, really positive feedback about how these companies that are, are trying to go more sustainable and, and incorporating yeah. things like this, um, how the morale of the employees is, is skyrocketing. You know, yeah. um, The employees are feeling like they're part of a solution instead of part of uh, the problem. And they're part of a company that's um, really offering a solution and doing something that's good. And it's, it's really empowering, you know. Um, so that's a, a real positive aspect. It really is. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. Absolute pleasure. Let's yeah. try and have a plastic, well, as much as possible, free environment as possible. Thank you very much for cool. being here today.